Hi there, my name is Tino Hinder, 17 years old and I'm a 3D artist. I enjoy creating art of all forms, from 2D all the way to 3D modeling and animation. I believe that through art, one can effectively convey and express a story in a unique way. One of my core strengths in this field is the ability to come up with something unique and different. Ever since I was little, I play more than six hours of video games in my Xbox 360. I just enjoyed being in that virtual world as if I were actually there. But aside from being a sweaty six-year-old gamer, I always had this tendency of wanting to create something. I had the habit of sketching things I would come across. Be it portraits, popular anime video game, be it portraits, popular anime characters, video game characters, or even inanimate objects. From there, I made my friend to 3D art. And yes, of course, it all started with the donut, followed by other tutorials. And from there, I began expressing my creativity in 3D through Blender. In 2022, out of the blue, after having played super hot, Titanfall, and Dishonored, I was inspired and motivated to embark on a journey that I now realize would mark the start of a new journey. I set out into the world of game development just before launching my YouTube channel. My initial setup involved immersing myself in the incredible Unity engine, where I followed various YouTube tutorials to create my very first game. Project NRSS. Behold the gameplay. The game took me roughly a whole month to develop, completely from the ground up, from the assets to the gameplay. Project NRSS takes place in space, a century later, while you play as a biotech cyborg, fighting against a hostile air network, which you are restrained under, in search for the meaning of your existence. I wanted this game to feature a sleek, geometric, and futuristic, yet minimalist aesthetic, similar to Control Cyber. Wait, wait. Yes, all right, let's do this. Similar to Super Hot, Deus Ex, Ghost in the Shell, Control, and the movie Oblivion. This particular design pays homage to the sci-fi minimalist aesthetic, staying true to minimalist elements while keeping the overall design sci-fi. This particular design is inspired by various video games as well as content. One thing I particularly admired about Control's design is that it features an interesting color palette along with color grading and a strong emphasis on lighting. This adds a strong visual characteristic about that particular level, making it seemingly intriguing and interesting to look at. Titanfall 2, more specifically, the pilot training mission makes use of abstract architecture, making the level easy to navigate while showcasing artistry through simple floating cube geometric shapes surmounted on top of each other. This creates a unique yet fascinating design altogether. Although simple and abstract, the different parts in the level are optimized to gradually introduce the player to wall running, avoiding clutter in design. Super Hot plays an important inspirational role as the main influence. Super Hot features literally no form of PBR textures present whatsoever. I could be incorrect, but let me know down below.
It has a nice touch of geometric shapes seen in the character. Having an arcade feel with the enemies being red, you, the main character being black, and the environment being pure white, makes the distinction between what not to engage in very clear to the parent. Clear. This makes the distinction between what not to engage in very clear to the player. After having observed the differences in design and controls between these games, I set out to create my own unique level for the game in Blender. The design is heavily inspired by the Sky Tower from the movie Oblivion, featuring a black and white color palette. From there, I began working on the level in Unity. Along the way, I made small modifications to the level as I went on. Having the level in place, I started to work on the player script and the mechanics for it. The objectives were camera movement with smooth interpolation, movement that had a smooth interpolation between coordinates, a ray cast based jump system that can be used for ground detection as well, and finally camera bobbing. Upon completion, my code was buggy and most of the stuff didn't work. I couldn't find a solution to fix it, so I gave up and used a pre-made character control instead, modifying the code and parameters as I went on. After that, I followed a tutorial about making a weapon system that allows you to holster, equip, or switch your weapon. Obviously upon testing and iteration, there were bugs present, but so far, I was happy with where it was, then moved on to making the actual game level. I started with a simple training mission that I could work off of to improve over time. The logic was straightforward. The player spawns in, they hit a level trigger which will display a message, hinting that the player press E to pick up the weapon. From there, the level is triggered. The player must shoot down all six targets in order to advance. Once they have all been shot, the menu will trigger and the control will stop working. Lastly, I began creating the assets from scratch, from the props to weapons used. For this part, I took inspiration from various weapon designs and used a set of pre-made hands made for animation. After that, I imported the assets into the engine. Having the weapons and arms in, having the animations in, I tweaked the animations in the animator graph. Phew, it was quite stressful, not gonna lie. Once I completed the daunting animation phase, I swapped the arm models with robotic ones. I couldn't begin to contemplate which looked better. So I decided to move on to post-processing and switch the render pipeline from URP to HDRP. Already the game was looking fantastic. I constantly experimented with the final look before turning back to the game library. And finally, there it was. At the rate at which I was going, I became very susceptible to burnout and eventually gave out. It's been roughly two years since I stopped working in the game, and now that I'm revisiting it, I realized that the very game I was working on didn't look like it was done by a complete noob or a beginner. I realized that I started something I didn't complete, and I need to get it going again. Since I had stopped, I enrolled in the free CS50 course, which aided me in understanding programming basics and fundamentals. Transitioning into C, the forefather of most programming languages. Thankfully now, understanding the flow of how a language works and operates more in depth has given me confidence to continue learning C Sharp by doing so. I've planned to redo this project and possibly migrate to the Unreal Engine due to visual scripting and blueprints, which should hopefully make programming a tad bit easier. This will kickstart my embark into the realm of programming. After completing the course, I plan on learning C++ directly. This gives me the opportunity to document the entire process from scratch on my YouTube channel. I hope you will join me on this journey and make a complete game with me. Even if it takes me years to develop, I hope you will be there by my side. Whew. Starting from now, the journey continues with me moving to the Unreal Engine and possibly developing smaller projects to hopefully better enhance my skills as a developer. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. If you're looking forward to this game and if you want more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like and comment your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for hearing my story and let's see where this game goes. Bye bye.